to kick off the call. So, but thank you everyone who's already dined in and joined us. And while you're getting ready, um, Thomas, I really appreciate being um, a part of this uh, call today. These are partners that I don't get to hear from uh, very often and um, it's just because of how our channel has been set up uh, and evolved over the years. So um, I am super excited to, to hear from these partners and to be able to not only pre present uh, with you guys um, as the environment and cha changes, but really um, want to dig in and, and listen today. So uh, when, uh, when we get past our presentation, so I really appreciate the, this opportunity. It means a lot to me as I build out, you know, some direction around um, the, the learning trends of the new environment. Yeah, no, we appreciate that you're here with us today, and uh, I think that's a really good introduction, actually. So I'm um, <laughs> I'm going to jump right in. So thank you, everyone, for joining uh, our webinar. Uh, this is Thomas Carlson from Knowledge Point Connect, and uh, you've already heard an introduction from our guest presenter, our star of this webinar, uh, Nancy Tremley, who's the Channel Development Manager at Autodesk um, or in the Autodesk Education Experiences team and um, we're really happy that Nancy is here with us today to share uh, the Autodesk perspective on um, the things that are going on in the world at the moment and particularly with a focus on the uh, virtualization of delivering training. Uh, we also have Alexei Andreev and Vanessa Piccino from the Knowledge Point Connect team. Uh, they are here to help us answer questions and, and you know, uh, interact with you guys as we go through uh, the agenda today. And, and we have a pretty packed agenda, so I'll just jump straight into it. So after a few more introductory notes from my side, we're going to focus the call on the virtualization, or virtualization benefit that we announced just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the intention is to explain and share more details about uh, how that is set up and, and how you can leverage that as an Autodesk learning partner. And that's where also Nancy will add a lot of good insight and tips and tricks in terms of how you can think about approaching uh, virtual training delivery. And, and she will also share uh, some specific information around how Autodesk are working with this, uh, with their teams and, and the provider that they're, they've chosen. Uh, to round things off, we also wanted to at least briefly touch on um, the promotion slash marketing uh, efforts that I think all of us are doing at the moment and, and kind of how we can approach that as well, given that the world around us is uh, going through a very challenging time at the moment. And maybe that means that we have to think differently about these things. And once we're through the presentations, we have planned this, that there should be time for Q&A at the end. Uh, we have muted all the phone lines uh, just because we're recording the session. But if you have a question, then there's a Q&A panel in the Zoom webinar tool. So feel free to type those questions in. I know that Alexia and Vanessa are going to help help us kind of keep an eye on it. But then at the end, we'll round off and you know, summarize uh, the key questions. And, and feel free to ask Nancy as many questions as you want. <laughs> we should take advantage of having Autodesk with us today. So, so, um, but we'll all do, in all seriousness, all do the best we can to, to um, answer those. So, so welcome and uh, let's uh, kick off. So just from my side, I wanted to summarize the information you probably already saw in our announcements on Partner Portal and the different documents we made available there. But um, like I mentioned before, the world is clearly going through a very challenging time. And we understand that that is also affecting you as training providers, uh, that customers are, are no longer at this time in, in, or at this point in time, not able to come to your training centers uh, in most countries at least. And to respond to that, Autodesk is launching this great new feature of the ATC program, uh, which uh, gives you a temporary permission to uh, provide your customers with access to the Autodesk software uh, under a single sub user subscription and through uh, an, you know, an, a virtualization application method. And when we say temporary permission, this is actually being put in place to run 
for the whole program year. Although all of us are, of course, hoping that the world will return to more of a normal pace much quicker than that. But there is an acknowledgement that this may have ripple effects throughout the year in terms of how what's happening in the, on an economic uh, level as well. So that's why Autodesk have decided to make this available for the whole program year so that you can uh, you know, look at delivering training virtually and then at the same time, once you open up again, continue with any plans you had around classroom training. So it will be possible to run these two initiatives in parallel. Uh, from a technical perspective, it's a single user subscription that's being used for the virtualization method. So for those of you who have network licenses installed in your classrooms, that stays in place, uh, again, so that you can run this in parallel. And then what we at Knowledge Point Connect can do is help you get access to single user uh, subscription licenses for those customers where that to attend any virtual session that, that you run. And these, the amount of licenses will be matched to the ones you have under your ATC agreement. So the standard here is 25 per site and per partner, per, per, per partner site, I should say, is the standard. But there may be some exceptions here and there, and then that will be uh, matched in, in terms of that. Um, the approach as well that's being taken is to assume that virtual training does not change the quality aspect of the training delivery, that this is still an official Autodesk course, which means that we're asking you as partners to collect learner feedback or end user feedback to the training evaluation system, just as you do for your normal classroom courses. That in return means that these users are eligible to get an official Autodesk certificate as part of the course attendance. So that is the same. It also means that your instructors or you need to assign instructors who are either Autodesk approved instructors or even better um, have gone through the Autodesk certified instructor, the ACI path. Uh, and that again aligns with the regular program requirements. So it is really an extension of the work that you're already doing, uh, taking into account that that's not possible at this stage uh, and therefore this option is made available to go into a, a virtual environment and be able to provide users with access to the software as part of the learning experience. So I think that summarizes uh, what it is that we're launching and hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, what we wanted to do next is to hand over to Nancy so that she can share some more details directly from the Autodesk perspective of how they're approaching this and, and also uh, with a few tips and tricks and, and ideas around how you as a partner can uh, approach uh, your virtual training, online training, etc. So I'm just going to switch uh, decks here and then I'm going to say once again, Nancy, thank you for joining us. We're really happy that you're here and I'll let you um, take it away. Thank you so much, Thomas. And I'm, like I said, I'm very excited to be here and not only present uh, some things that we're doing here around virtualization and our side of education with our field team here at Autodesk, but also listen, right? So I am up for questions um, and will be available afterwards um, if anyone should need a follow-up on this presentation. I just want to touch briefly on the um, addition to the program guide that is a virtualization edition, which talks about it being temporary. As you can imagine, uh, Autodesk has several license use agreements. And with that, we have um, several environments that we not only teach, but perform work with our software. Currently on the commercial side, virtualization is allowed for standalone. So to move virtualization as quickly as we could into this program of training in our license use agreement for training as a services or a paid uh, product, um, it was just so much quicker for us to put it in here for this program year on a single uh, license rather than uh, encompass the entire license use agreement. We are working feverishly on our side to make sure that Autodesk Legal is comfortable with virtualization as we're rolling it out this year and making sure that we are 
um, approaching the license use agreement properly where the ATC license use agreement for training as a service is concerned. That's very important to your organization because um, we want to make sure that we keep the license use agreement for training services only with the training license from ATC program. So that's why you see it come in as temporary. Don't be overly concerned that it currently says temporary, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of background of how we were able to get it in quickly and then really assess the usage. Thomas just spoke to um, a really good point and that's the training evaluation system. We more than ever need training evaluation systems for every course in an online learning environment that you give. Because if we can prove that the online learning environment trend um, can instill proper successful knowledge transfer to the student, then it gives us what we need on our side to go forward to um, make sure that this program remains solid and make sure that you have all the tools that you need to meet all the learning trends of the future. So with that, I want to talk about an API. Um, an API is a product that's built on top of a supporting uh, product. And Autodesk Education, if you can imagine, goes on to campuses with our field team and they go on to some of the major universities around the globe. We have 120 Education Lighthouse accounts around the globe and right now 93% of the world's education campuses are dispersed in there from uh, working from home. So that really makes it difficult for us to engage directly with the student. So we went out and uh, looked at a tool that one of our platinum level partners here in the United States has built out over the last few years by getting a license exception with our business development team to look at a forward thinking program um, and create this tool. It's called the CAD Live Solution. CAD Live is the API or the product that is built on top of, um, of their frame platform. So, and I'll talk a little bit about that. On this next slide, let's just look at what CAD Live looks like for um, you as a partner. It's a true virtual learning experience and we will give you some more example about that in this presentation. So it's tools built for training. It's to help manage your course. Um, it has reporting options of who was there, how long they were there, and how engaged they were with the virtual machine servers. The price is based on usage, which was very important for us at Autodesk Education because in the summer, as you can imagine, we don't train many courses. So we'll lower our virtual machine uses in the summer to keep our costs down. One thing we thought was quite nifty, I guess, uh, for this tool is that it's an Autodesk Learning Partner Neutral Setup. So it has a specialized URL that's built just for Autodesk Education and it doesn't look like you're coming in through a vendor or third party tool. On the next slide, uh, we get a little bit of a glimpse into what it looks like when a student comes into um, our portal. So we're going to put our logos here because what's so ex uh, exciting to us is being able to push out the Autodesk Learning Partner brand and we're going to have it on our CAD Live portal. And the interface roles are really, were really important to us because we have several different levels of, of field team roles as well. So we have the students coming in, those need to be managed, but they also need to be heard.
We have the instructor, which is our field team that's on campus. And then we have our field team that manages the relationship with the campus. So they are the manager here. And it allows them to speak with the instructor and even present our lecture to the instructor without using the virtual machine. And then of course there's an admin and a super admin to help manage um, the portal itself. And not only how the portal looks, but how it engages the student when it reaches out to the student and when it follows through with the student. So on the next slide, we're gonna talk about these roles just a little bit. So the admin has class management. You can see over on the black portion of, of the, um, the caption here that the admin can manage the classes and they can also manage the courses. The difference in a course and a class is a course is set up that, uh, with the ability to add content there. You can add uh, the exercises, the data sets, whatever you may be using in your digital format for your courseware. And then the class is who's going to attend the class, when they're going to attend, when they need to be notified, and when they need to follow through with things like the survey. Um, the user management portion of this platform helps us to, to manage one-on-one -on -one or in groups, the students, instructors, managers, and other administrators for the super admin so that they can manage their own courses. So it's not so burdensome or um, heavy, a heavy lift for your super admin. So they give the user management tools the ability um, to be managed by the user that's in the class itself when the class takes place. And on the next slide, let's look at a little bit of the manager. Um, the manager is very important because they're the user manager. So they get to manage the active classes, the upcoming classes, and the dashboard that rolls into the reporting of how many students were there, which students were there, and how engaged they were. And on the next slide, we're going to get really into what it's like for the instructor. So we said that the instructor could see their active classes and incoming classes or upcoming classes and then all upcoming classes per organization. This is important if you have a lead instructor um, or if you have an instructor that happens to be out and another instructor needs to cover for them. So it gives the ability for each instructor to see the other instructor's courses and to step in seamlessly um, to that course. And on the next slide, we'll talk just a little bit about what the CAD Live interface looks like for the instructor. Right? So you can see in this picture, this is an instructor sitting down at one location and he can see an, even a second instructor from another location and then he can see the classroom itself by video and in on the screen on the right, there's a small window where he's actually watching the other instructor um, demo a part that they're going through. And on the left, this is his screen for when he takes over and demos to the course. So this is a true over-the-shoulder um, course um, that's developed uh, in CAD Live and managed through the virtual machine server. There's the courses in here, of course, which means the content is there. It has a video session which can be ran by the Autodesk Learning Partner for whatever tool they wish to use. So the client for video conferencing is not there. You upload your own client there. It could be Zoom, it could be WebEx, go to meeting, go to training, or any of those. And then also there's a chat session here. So the class chat room is there. And then also on the list of students, uh, as the students come into the course, the instructor can reach out to each individual student to ask a question to the student as they're onboarding. That way it doesn't 
um, disturb any of the rest of the class. And then, of course, it supports the training evaluation system survey. There's a survey tab here that will come up at a what, whatever set a part of the course that the instructor sets up. So it's a really great interactive experience and as much interactive as it can be in this environment. And on the next slide, this is what the student sees from the student side. So as you can see, when they log in, they see a live student dashboard. So they see their active classes. If they have upcoming classes that have been assigned to them, it's there. They have their own profile coming in, so they only see what's uh, set for them. And then they see their completed classes. And over on the right, there's an attend for the active class. That's how quickly they can just drop in and start the class at, at up to 15 minutes before the class starts. And then the details under the completed class, if they click on that and open it, that link there to the training evaluation system survey is there for them to go back in to and complete or it's a, it's a link straight through to TES if they want to download their certificate going forward, right? And over on the left, the caption that I placed in here is what the student actually sees. So as you can see, once they access the, con the courseware, the content is right there. The data set opens up that they're working on depending on the course they're in, and it allows them to move freely within um, in the, the product itself. Now, this is a Fusion class. So in Fusion, Fusion is on the cloud. So when they go into the virtual machine and they access Fusion, it will have them log in to their Fusion profile into their Autodesk Oxygen ID, and then whatever they do in the course, they can save up to their gallery when they're finished. So they have that when they go back to that product after they leave the class. If this would be, say, Inventor um, instead of Fusion, the uh, course would all be there with the coursework in the completed class, and they would just save out the file um, to the machine that they're personally working on and be able to open it in their version of Inventor in the future. And on the next slide, we'll talk just a little bit about um, the remote computer. So these two blue buttons in the caption here um, takes them directly to the online meeting and takes them directly to the remote computer. That is how simple it is. Once they click on the remote computer, this uh, CAD Live system connects them with the closest virtual machine server to their location per their IP address, giving them the best experience possible for what's available uh, depending on where they're at in the world. And then you see the online meeting button here. If there's anything that changes in the Zoom or WebEx um, video portion of the class, it automatically updates when the instructor or manager changes it here, and it can change up to the time that the class starts um, without having to send out new notices from that client out to the students. So um, you can add students to the video client, you can take them away from the video client, or if something happens with um, the class and we need to move to another client because maybe someone can't get on in their region, you can actually change the client after the, the class starts and the CAD Live system will support the update there. If you'll notice in the black portion here, we talk a little bit about browser capability, right? And there's um, WebGL support and Canvas support here. Um, those are two educational platforms within the United States, I know and WebGL is global, um, but Canvas is mostly used in the United States and it is like Blackboard, which is a platform for education where curriculum actually exists. And so CAD Live is built to link into education uh, campuses and their curriculum to deliver the CAD Live um, uh, course on the actual Canvas 
or Blackboard platform. So there's a little bit of work um, that has to be done between the support teams to connect those two, but it actually supports uh, education campuses. And then finally, with browser capability, a lot of these new APIs, not just CAD Live, but a lot of the new APIs um, are built uh, in the last few years, right? So the browsers that are used to access them are newer. Um, so the student, it is recommended that the student use Chrome or Firefox or Safari um, to log into CAD Live specifically because it wasn't built to Internet Explorer. Other um, browsers may work with it, and I know Chrome Edge is, is um, advancing its capabilities, and, but we just haven't tested it yet with Chrome Edge. So newer browsers work better, but it's just because APIs for virtual are newer products. So um, next slide, we'll talk just a little bit more about um, the interface for the student. So this is actually a capture from a course that I took a couple of weeks ago. It was a D3 course that was being um, presented to a handful of teachers, high school teachers here in the United States as they went um, to disperse to home to, to do some learning on their own. And we were teaching Fusion 360, and this is my view or my screen as I was bringing up Fusion. This is the Fusion uh, splash page. As you can see along the bottom of that splash page, it's every product that D3 is authorized to teach resides in uh, on the virtual machine. This sandbox can be supported by uh, the D3 team and is one reason we went with D3's CAD Live as our virtual um, API for, for the platform because that team could support um, implementation and they have an implementation uh, specialization for all of our products. So as you're looking for an API provider, there's a few things you need to look for and there's some recommendations that you need to consider. One, um, the virtual machine server for the provider, uh, whether it be Frame, Citrix, VMware, or any local in your region, needs to support what's called a 3D machine because our products are 3D products. And so it would take a server's 3D machine um, to be able to launch our products properly and work smoothly through the experience with the learner. And then um, we need to, um, like I said, make sure that the students are aware they need to, to use an updated browser. Uh, other recommendations is, if at all possible, they need to plug in to an Ethernet connection. It's not that it won't work with, um, with Wi-Fi, it's just a smoother customer experience if they're, if they're plugged in, right? So their internet latency stays level and it doesn't blip as they're working through um, the product. Uh, it's, if they can, it's great for them to have two screens. If not, they can toggle back and forth. Um, to use a headset with a microphone, and uh, that is, and then the video portion of the the course as well, um, with the webcam, so that they can have a true two way um, learning experience with the instructor. Uh, we do have it set up where the students join 15 minutes prior to the start of the um, course because um, a virtual machine access from an IP address to the virtual machine and and for CAD Live or any other API to lock in the, um, the student into the best environment that's available to them via their location um, takes about five minutes. And so you just want to make sure um, that uh, the student is in the, in the course beforehand and if they need anything as they walk through the simple steps, it's there. So we talked about virtual machine access in 3D. We talked about the learning software profile. If you're in F Fusion, for example, they log into their own profile. They're actually working in their profile. And um, remote instructor access is another um, individual learner experience that we liked with CAD Live. So when we go back to um, classroom training, um, CAD Live allows uh, uh, one 
class to be actually in a classroom when the student is in another or I'm sorry the instructors in another location with other students so this is a way to expand your business to multiple locations with one instructor and to cut down travel experiences let's go to the next slide Okay, so I have top 10 points to review just to just to to talk about what's important when you're looking for a virtual provider. So I think this is animated to us. So you can just go. So this improves the number of attendees um, per class statistics by offering multiple locations. It allows the ability to offer more training options to customers due to instructor locations. So um, not only are your um, learners uh, in different locations, your instructors can be in different locations as well. Um, it requires a transition to the ACI learning cycle training format to manage. So if you're in a learning environment, and this is really important, a follow along learning doesn't really work very well because the instructor needs to stop and view the user machines as they're working. So again, remember the Bloom's taxonomy that we follow in the Autodesk Certified Instructor Program uh, requires the instructor to lecture first while no one um, is using the machines. And then second, to demonstrate while no one is following along. And then third, allow the student to, um, to follow along with you or follow along as you have um, and while you're watching them. So lecture, demonstrate, and hands-on time. If this, the course is split up that way, it works very smoothly. Um, one instructor can easily handle up to 20 students um, and, uh, and it's a great customer experience. Um, of course, uh, you want to make sure that you're able to maintain the cost um, based on usage. So have a provider that might have a monthly subscription, but if you reserve machines, make sure you can lower the number of machines month to month so that you're not reserving machines in downtime. It ensures the instructor specialist is in front of many types of customers. So, so, so many times our instructors teach the same um, customers over and over, right? And so they don't get a new customer experience. They just get a new learner coming in to them to teaching the same thing. This gives your instructor the capability to be in front of different um, learner types uh, and branch out on their industry experience by getting to teach different learner types in the same environment. And number six is it reduces or eliminates travel expenses for instructors and customers. We've already reviewed that a bit. And you know, that can be quite costly, but it can also take your instructor away um, from their technical sales job if, if you have them set up for that as well. It provides individual student knowledge transfer with over the shoulder visibility. So as the instructor, as you can see in that one caption, the instructor could see what the other person was doing. They can actually tap that person on the shoulder if they're behind and say, let me take over your screen so I can help you um, with some tips um, to get you caught up during the hands-on time. So it's a true over-the-shoulder experience and it doesn't disturb the rest of the class while they're working with one student. Number eight, the students stay focused uh, to learning due to the instructor view into their machines. Lots of times when you're giving online learning, um, it's a video chat type uh, learning and you don't know if they're, if they're not on their video camera, you don't know if they're focused or paying attention. But the students tend to stay focused because they can see the instructor view into their machine. They can also see when the instructor's viewing their machine or when it's tapping them on the shoulder or when the instructor's in their machine helping them get caught up. So keeps more focus time. Number nine, it supports the training and evaluation system survey feedback. Um, CAD Live was, um, we we're very excited. It was built around the Autodesk Learning Partner Program and excited that it supported our training system. But make sure 
or training evaluation system, but make sure that your, whichever provider you use, that they support a survey system and it's not their survey system, right? So for us, it was important because of global data privacy restrictions. CAD Live does not have their own system that we set up there because we it doesn't capture the individuals coming in outside of a student number until the instructor changes that on their side um, so it doesn't so it follows GDPR um, regulations and then number 10 allows for multiple digital courseware options so um, D3 uses in their inventor, one of their inventor courses, they use Ascent content, but they also use custom content. And this allows them to put more than one digital courseware uh, in aside the course that we talked about and they built it out to support that for custom training. Um, they also have customers that they only do custom training for so they have every time they build something for a customer they put those learning courses in a bucket right and the only people that get access to those buckets are those assigned to that um, customer class so and I think that concludes our CAD Live uh, review and overview I'm happy to take questions around CAD Live itself Tomas or we can move on to to all online uh, learning environments yes I think thank you very much to start with Nancy for all of that good information and I think I think we'll draw the agenda around a bit because I see there's been a few questions coming in that, that actually align well to what you're been presented, presenting. So I'd encourage everyone in the audience, feel free to type in your questions and I'll get started on just um, reading a few out and, and hopefully you can help answer those, Nancy. And, and um, I might have to ask Vanessa and, and Alexei to keep track of me if I miss anything. But um, uh, so one key question is, so you've talked about how, how Autodesk is leveraging this. Um, can partners also uh, sign up and leverage the same tools? So basically on the good work that you've already kind of mm -hmm. laid the groundwork on and, and if, if a partner wanted to leverage the same tool, is that possible? Yes, so CAD Live was built out, uh, like I said, uh, the Autodesk license um, strategy team um, gave an exception to D3 um, and for them to build out this tool. And because of the current learning environment, um, D3 has um, placed CAD Live as a product to be leased uh, to all Autodesk learning partners. You have to be an Autodesk learning partner to lease what's called a tenant at CAD Live. Um, you don't have to use CAD Live. It's something that we're using and that Autodesk work with to build out with this partner. Um, it wasn't intended to be a product that D3 uh, presented out for lease, but in the current environment, they've been given approval to um, sign uh, subscriptions to CAD Live for any Autodesk learning partner, but you must be an Autodesk learning partner for, um, to be able to, to subscribe to CAD Live. Excellent, thank you. And um, there's some follow-up questions uh, related to that. So CAD Live supports any Autodesk product, right? So Revit, Navix works, you've talked yes. about Fusion. So it's kind of all of them are. Right, so what you're actually leasing is you're leasing a virtual uh, machine sandbox. The sandbox is empty. Um, when you when they set up your tenant your sandbox is empty so your standalone license that we've allowed for virtualization um, that license order or that product order um, will be placed in that sandbox um, for so you're accessing not d3's uh, software but you're accessing your software that your Autodesk learning partner has been assigned through your ATC order Perfect. And uh, one more question in terms of CAD Live. Uh, do you have any, uh, do you know what cl class capacity, so the size of the class? There's a partner in Ukraine who's running self-paced courses with three to 500 students at, at the same time concurrently logged in. Do you, mm -hmm. Are there restrictions on, on, on this? And CAD, you can use CAD Live in several online environments, right? 
So courses could be set up um, in CAD Live where the courseware is there and the, and the Zoom class, I guess, is there. And you can have all of your students come in there. They can chat with you. You can lecture. And then they could download and do self-pace where you're not watching over their shoulder. That is an unlimited number. You can do however many you want to do there on the CAD Live API. As far as the virtual machine access, you can um, lease up to 150 virtual machines at a time. So it would just be scheduling when you're going to actually have a virtual class versus the, um, the student going off on their own and doing self-paced from time to time. So if you had 300 students, you can manage up to 150 at a time um, and, and then just perform more virtual classes um, in smaller segments. Because what's important there is that um, you're lease for the actual virtual machine on the frame platform is month to month. So if you wanted to do more um, virtualization in one month, you could up your number of, of machines in that one month and then your course could go into some self-paced for the next month and it is set on a calendar month. Otherwise, you could keep open 150 reserve machines um, at any given time to use at any given time um, and then just run more virtual classes versus, you know, Zoom classes. But those could all be managed in that CAD Live API. Um, the virtual machine limit is due to frame, not due to CAD Live, is 150 at a time. Oh, perfect. Um, there are some further on questions as well. So if a partner signs up and they share their own customized content through to the platform, that, um, so I, have I understood that correctly, then it's only they and their customers who see that. So other learning partners will not get access to. Uh, you're, absolute, you're absolutely correct. So their tenant um, is their portal just for them. The only people that can see their tenant, their sandbox, and their usage there, other than a very high level of how many machines are being used and how many uh, individual learners are accessing the machines and how many courses are being given. Outside of that piece of it, um, no one at D3 sees any of that outside of that piece. So what they, how they manage their tenant, um, what they house in their tenant, um, how often uh, they use, uh, you know, use it for Zoom versus uh, uh, mis uh, mis virtual machines is not something that's reported back um, to the CAD Live team or the support team there. Um, they could probably dig and say, well, the CAD Live was used this much and this many machines were used and they could probably figure out when you're using Zoom and when you're using machines, but it is not part of, uh, of the re auto reporting that goes into uh, the D3 team. And then uh, just to, additionally to that, um, the partner can manage their own sandbox. They don't have to purchase support. Um, support is there um, if, it, if it's needed, but they don't have to purchase support. They can support once the tenant's set up in, and they're subscribed to it, they don't have to, um, to choose support for the D3 team to be there at all. Excellent. And that touches on a topic, I think we have four or five questions about the costs of signing up, if there's an interest. <laughs> so can you uh, talk about that at all? I can talk a little bit. You have to remember that this is a product, um, this is a D3 product. So Team D3 is a learning management uh, division of D3 Technologies. Uh, D3 Technologies has nine, um, they're a platinum level bar. Uh, they have nine locations in the United States and um, they are our largest manufacturing bar in the Western hemisphere um, for us and reach uh, several different industries through Autodesk uh, Consulting, what used to be Autodesk Consulting as well. Um, so they have a huge footprint for us. Um, so, and the reason I say that is because it's a solid company. It's not going to go away right um, Autodesk is fully vested and invested in 
in D3. D3 has actually absorbed 19 locations in North America and kept nine of those locations open for their prime uh, customers. They also own CAM and CNC machine shops uh, through the United States and they also uh, support several maker spaces uh, throughout our country here in the United States. So it's a very solid company, um, but you have to understand that CadLive is their product, so we can't promote it, right? So you have to find the right um, a tool that's that's right for you, right? Um, but what we can, what I can tell you is that they are giving a twenty five percent. A discount for setup. So the Autodesk, their Autodesk fee um, when they work at Autodesk is an education fee, which is 25% less than the commercial pricing. Um, and they are offering that out to all the Autodesk learning partners for setup. Now I can tell you um, setup is a two day um, setup uh, once you uh, sign an agreement or a subscription with them. Um, Previously, um, before the discount, it was $3,600 US for the setup, and they are offering $2,500 US for the setup. There's other subscription costs and um, machine re reservation costs, and then usage, machine usage costs, not CAD Live usage, but the virtual machine uses. It's it's by the hour per group of students um, and they would be able to tell you what that sliding scale is depending on your location in the world. And, and that uh, ties very nicely into another question that's come in on several uh, several questions on the same topic is uh, if the partner is interested and, and wants to evaluate the tool, uh, how do we put them in touch with D3 in the best way? Uh, should we maybe plan something to share that on partner portal perhaps to kind of share contact details or yes you can share contact details on cad live if you find if you if you think this is a, a tool that your partners would like to use they certainly should contact the d3 team uh, directly mm -hmm. um, the d3 telephone number in the United States. This is a toll-free United States number. It's at the bottom of this deck because they own this deck because it's their product, right? Um, and teamd3.com, there's a contact us there. Um, they can also go through the contact us there and and talk with uh, the D3 team. Now, CAD Live is produced in English and it's in English only. However, um, you know, there are localization plans. Um, and so if you, if you at KnowledgePoint, I know your, um, your language capabilities are much more advanced than we are on this side of the pond and we can appreciate that. And if you guys wanted to talk to Team D3 about those plans, they, they would talk with you about that. Perfect, perfect. That, that's really good information. I think it covers the main questions around uh, the platform. And I, I see there are some other questions as well. So I think absolutely someone is asking, can we ask more generic questions about licensing? Just throw them in there. We'll, uh, we, we're here to kind of exchange with you guys and kind of try to answer as many questions as we can. So feel free to do that now. Uh, what I would also add, there's been a few other questions that I deliberately skipped just to go through the platform. But um, if, you're not going to leverage CatLive, uh, then as you've heard Nancy mention on several occasions is that the option to virtualize your training can be done through other tools as well. So, so I think that's maybe see a, a couple of questions around that. So uh, there is no mandate to go and use CatLive. This is a mm -hmm. tool that you've heard that Autodesk have invested very strongly in and, and therefore uh, and are having good experiences with. So that's why we want the Nancy to kind of share that experience partly to maybe encourage you to use the tool but also partly to share the the experience in, mm -hmm. in its own right uh, but you are free to kind of seek out other solutions that may be available uh, there was one question in that respect and i don't know nancy maybe you can help us with that but if partners have their own unutilized machines so physical machines mm -hmm. can they still use those as virtual machines uh, as part of the overall approval to, to virtualization? 
Sure. Um, we, you know, really encourage the use of mobile lab with the standalone license. Um, so you may have to mail those out to your students um, for distance learning um, so they can have access to the license. But we do encourage using your mobile labs on a basis where they can be delivered to the customer and returned um, to to the partner if you if you feel comfortable uh, with that scenario and that situation. Different parts of the world are opening back up and within the next uh, few weeks to month and that might not be um, you know that that might not be an option in some regions but we do encourage you to if you have a customer that you've been training um, repetitively uh, especially a, a, a customer corporation or company that you might want to use a mobile lab to to ship out to them um, for training during this difficult time. Excellent, thank you. Uh, another question that's related both to Catalyze but also to the those who seek their own solutions. So is this intended to only be used during classes, the live classes, or can students also log in and practice when they have time to so basically, um, you know, come back online and do exercises, etc., on their own. Right. So um, you would need to set up a course for that, but it could be um, it. You could set up a class for that student to come in at certain times um, during a, a span of time. Um, but it would have to be set up because um, if you if you don't set up a class, they don't access a class, so they don't have the remote machine button. But yes, you can use it self-paced as well uh, for access. You would just have to set up a class um, to be you know, a, a study time, so to speak. Perfect, thank you. Um, the other questions I can see at the moment are related to getting access to the presentation and the recording, and I can confirm we are recording. We will be sending this out. Um, I assume, Nancy, you're okay for us to PDF the slides as well, because that's also being asked uh, sure. to, to sure. be able to go through. Uh, so we'll sure. add that. I, I, we will publish this through our partner portal so you can log in and, and retrieve both the recording link and the documents in the same uh, same place. Uh, so. And um, I did share um, some um, PDFs last night about uh, different environments for learning um, and so I'd rec uh, suggest that you put those on your portal as well. It talks about the virtual learning environment and how to train to um, different individuals in that environment. Exactly. So there's, um, we are actually, it's, we almost think you and I practice this. <laughs> That's going to be my, my next point. So we are going to publish some additional documents that we've gotten from Autodesk. And uh, there's also, in, in terms of talking about other options, I'm just bringing up another, another slide here where Autodesk have combined some best practices. And I know you, Nancy, has actually done this research yourself. So you've kind of gone through and benchmarked CAD Live against some other platforms. And there mm -hmm. are obviously some other uh, virtual, you know, virtual training delivery platforms uh, mm -hmm. that US partners hopefully can pull from and kind of uh, see how those work may work better or as, as the same for you. Right. And if you don't mind, I can just talk to the the comparison here. Is that yeah, okay? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, as you can see from the caption, VMware, Frame, and Citrix, those are virtual machine sandboxes. So those are corporations that um, manage the servers for the virtual machines that you put your software on. They don't have APIs on top of them to manage the courses. So if you have a, if you have a course management tool, you may want to get an um, uh, enterprise license with one of these uh, virtual machine sandboxes. I will tell you in the United States it averages um, to have that type of um, unlimited enterprise license with this um, with these providers it costs about fifty thousand dollars a year for um, for a, a license agreement with those so if you're if you're a large corporation um, that might be the answer for you but we did uh, find all three of those um, uh, virtual machine sandbox uh, vendors um, to have not only have 3D machines to support our product, but we found that they are global and they have access globally um, and they also have um, kind of like repeaters to their um, to their 
internet latency um, and kind of like they have cell towers, right? They works on cellular um, to get more access and more reach throughout the world. So we do recommend those those are the, our top three. And then Exit Certified is an IMVP API that sits on top of VMware's platform. They do sell a virtual sandbox. Um, they work on a corporation basis, so there's it's not a subscription model. So it would be an annual contract. Um, and it's a little more expensive than CAD Live is, and it's their API is for true virtualization, which is fantastic. Fantastic. However, it doesn't have a support function in case you needed to subscribe to the support uh, team. They don't have a support team for our products yet. Excellent. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. While you were talking, there was also some further questions. So, um, and we're now jumping back to the like the approval from Autodesk side about uh, licensing and the number of licenses given the, the difference of um, uh, between network and um, and standalone. So if someone has uh, you know multiple computers but are only running, uh, let's see here. So you're running uh, multiple computers in 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 parallel. So basically, it's a uh, 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 you know more than 25. It looks like it's more than 25 licenses that's active at the same time, but it's not the same installations. Uh, whether that would work with this new initiative, and I can say. Yes, I think that's something that Knowledge Point Connect can help sort out so that your licensing kind of matches this mm -hmm. this new scheme with the network that you're using. So it's more in terms of the number of licenses in the program, it's more of like permanently if you're increasing your license pool, then there's mm -hmm. an approval process to go through. But, but Vanessa can help right. with the practical details of that if you want to contact um, our, our help desk. But I, I think that's uh, still okay, right, Nancy? Then, like, yes. Kind of, yeah. Yep. Perfect. Um, so let me then, so at the moment we, I'm just going to skip forward. So, so I think this was really good. There's been a lot of questions and, and feel, I see we're we have five minutes to go. So feel free to uh, type in any further questions, but I think Nancy gave us such a good review that, that you know, a lot of questions have been answered. So, so I just wanted to, while we wait for any other questions. I just wanted to summarize uh, a bit, and then you know, next steps in in terms of what to do next. If, if uh, the overall benefit, uh, this is something that you want to leverage. So as as mentioned before, so for the time being, this is a new benefit of the program. It's in play for this whole program year, potentially with more permanent version, uh, which we're all hoping that that might be the case because uh, obviously this is a really good addition to those uh, of you who have primarily in function classroom, then this is an important addition to, to the business side. Uh, we have already made a few of the documents available on partner portal. Uh, I assume you've seen these because the webinar invite was part of that. So <laughs> you probably already downloaded them. But as Nancy mentioned, we, we got some really good uh, your know, tips and tricks and, and your know, best practices uh, information last night. So we're going to make those available as well and include this recording and these slides so that you have one news article to go to and download them. Um, another thing that I know you touched on, Nancy, is, is really the, um, uh, you know, the train the trainer aspect of this as well, because it is a, a different environment. I know I Previously, before Knowledge Point, I worked at a company where we did uh, blended learning, and and you know our instructors, uh, some of them loved doing the online piece, others hated it uh, mm -hmm. because it, it's not the same as being in a classroom in front of people. Um, so there is on the Autodesk Learning Central, among all the other good information up there, the training the trainer course has some good information around how to think and you know how to structure your classes the you know the the um, the bloom taxonomy and how you build up and the different versions there so um, calling it out here on the slide uh, your instructors should hopefully have access to the learning central if not you can set them up through partner center and, and if you encounter any issues then uh, i know vanessa might be able to help with that as well so it's kind of but but that's something to recommend i've taken that course myself recently and i think there's some good tips and tricks in there as well. Um, and then just a very final note. So if you want to either order these additional licenses because you're currently on network or you're actually going ahead and delivering virtual training, we would ask that you notify 
know, knowledge point. Uh, so Autodesk are asking us to both compile statistics, but also to know what each partner is doing. So drop us an email to our help desk and we'll share some information, try to answer your questions. But that's something we really ask that all of you do, even if you don't have a question and drop us an email and just let us know that you're, you're kind of doing this so that we, we know that and can collect feedback as well. Mm -hmm. um, and while I was talking, there was one more question. Um, I think this one is for you as well, Nancy. Um, so are there plans by Autodesk to allow students to connect to virtual mas machines in Autodesk just to practice? So I guess it's coming back to the question around whether this is only for live courses or also for practice on their own uh, type of time. Right. Um, so for the education space, the accredited education space, right? So for qualified students, instructors, and institutions, um, there's the education software for download uh, on the education community. But that means that the course uh, that the student is taking is directly, uh, it's giving direct credits toward a high school degree or a university um, degree plan, right? Outside of that, um, we have, there was an announcement that we're giving 90 days access to our cloud products. Um, and so we had an announcement around that. But outside of that, desktop products, um, they would need to go to an Autodesk Learning Partner for desktop products um, and use the virtualization environment um, for practice, learning, uh, and access. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a follow-up question to say that um, <laughs> ATC's customers don't get access to that student software. And I mean, that, that's uh, kind of, yeah, uh, I think the assumption is that uh, the standard customer going to an ATC is someone who's out in industry, a professional mm -hmm. user. And mm -hmm. obviously, in recent years, uh, Autodesk are certainly offering some you know, fairly uh, reasonable and attractive subscription options for individuals to kind of purchase a license as well and use not only for the practice but also for for their work i think i'm right in saying that that's kind of the underlying assumption in why right. you know, the, the free software is currently aimed at the, the you know, people in academia and work. right and if they work for a company that has a network license um, they can check out the network license if they're not inside the the office working they can check out that network license to the employee um, for at home use uh, while they're not in the office as well so if they're employed that gives them that option if they're not and they want to learn there's 30 day trials if they are through their 30 day trial there are subscription models um, and then we uh, have some announcements around product availability for the next 90 days till everyone can get back in a office environment. But opening this up for virtualization um, for the Autodesk Learning Partner allows this virtualization benefit and then a tool like CAD Live would allow them to subscribe to it, uh, the partner to subscribe to it and offer for a fee access to the virtual machine. Perfect. Um, there's some further on suggestions around making only practice version software available. So what, what we'll do there is then, uh, and I can say this from the distributor side, is that Nancy and her team are really good at collecting feedback and kind of then running a wish list of enhancements to the program. I think there's been several things, for, for, for example, training evaluation system that's been implemented because of partner feedback. So uh, I'll pick this up in terms of the, the feedback around practice versions and forward out and you know to, to be considered by Autodesk but at this point in time that that's kind of reserved for the for the academic uh, market as we said right as you can imagine putting it out there it's kind of hard to reel it back in <laughs> when our environments go back to uh, um, to what our previous normal was um, it's really hard to reel that back in right especially when you're in a subscription based um, Deliver business delivery model. So I think that 
kind of concludes all the questions. I see that we're slightly over time as well, but we've had a lot of useful information shared with us. So thank you again, Nancy, for all your insights. We really appreciate that you could come and join us. And mm -hmm. I think you're more than welcome to come back whenever you feel like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so just invite me. I'm always excited to work with your team. Very impressed with your team as always. Um, and super excited that these partners get to work with your team um, because they're the most successful team we have at Autodesk in the distributor market. So congratulations. <laughs> Well, thank, thank you very much. And, and thank you everyone for listening. Uh, we will make the slides and recordings available through Partner Portal. You can reach out to the help desk or to me or Alexei Vanessa personally as well, and we'll be happy to follow up. I also just want to say I hope that you, your teams and your families stay safe in this uh, challenging time. Uh, if there's anything else you want to touch base on or, or you want to discuss, then let us know. Uh, we're, we'll do our best to try to support in, in this challenging yeah. time. But uh, thank you very much for joining us. And, and yes. we hope that what you've heard today can be put to good use in your, yes. in your business. Stay well, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone.